I became involved with the John Adams Society um, four or five years ago when I came up with the idea that we ought to have one. I went to the IVLP program and realized there wasn't a John Adams Society. I came back and, and spoke to the embassy and suggested that I ought to set one up. They thought it was a good idea and I founded the John Adams Society four years ago um, and, have, uh, and, 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 and took it through its initial stages of becoming an association. Getting more involved in jazz is like any organisation that people might be members of. The more that you put into it, the more that you can get out of it. I think it's a fantastic chance for people to connect with each other and remember the great experiences that they had on their exchange programmes and relive those experiences, but also uh, come together and create something for the future. For potential members who aren't yet involved with jazz, I hope that the opportunity is clear. Um, jazz is potentially one of the best networking opportunities that exist in this country. Jazz Society's primary role is to serve as an alumni association for everybody that's been on the US State Department exchange programs. Um, we do annual events, we bring people together, we connect this wonderful talent that has been assembled by the US State Department and we help the talent find meaningful ways to give back to society as a whole but also to engage with each other uh, in a way that helps further their professional career objectives. I was with the Embassy for 31 years and in that time I met the most amazing people who've been on the program and I wanted to continue to be involved after my retirement. And it really has been wonderful continuing the association with uh, international visitors through the John Adams Society. I went on my IBLP programme back in 2011 uh, and as soon as I got back I was very excited uh, by the fact that Jazz had very recently launched and were looking for new people to get involved. Uh, I had a very memorable time in America on that trip. I think all of us who've been on one of those trips have very special memories and have a real affection for the United States and the special relationship. And so being involved in jazz is a way of keeping those, not only keeping those memories alive, but keeping that special relationship alive, but bringing together people who have that shared experience in order to further those aims yet again. When I participated in my International Visitors Leadership Programme, the enormous opportunity that existed, not only with developing a relationship with the people I, I participated uh, on the IVLP with, but also the vast and diverse alumni here in the UK. I was very lucky to participate in the Young European Leaders Programme, and every year since 2004 when I did that, um, the team has got together in a different home city of one of the people who, who was on that programme, and, and that's been an amazing experience for me. When the opportunity to get involved with Jazz came about, I saw the opportunity and the potential to really develop that network uh, here in the UK, uh, and I'm glad that we've been able to do that. We've got a long way to go, but certainly where we've got to so far has been pretty impressive. The ultimate one was being at the US Embassy in November 2012 for the special presidential elections party and uh, seeing the results come in from the United States in the early hours of the morning. That was really special and uh, a unique insight into the uh, American presidential elections and democratic process. I think probably the highlight of the, of the last two years was uh, pushing on our 4th of July party this year at the Speaker's House in the House of Commons uh, in those wonderful state rooms uh, with the Speaker himself uh, attending and speaking uh, and politicians from across the political spectrum in attendance including former party leaders and cabinet ministers and lots and lots of jazz members too. It was a fantastic event. It took quite a lot of planning. Uh, it had been in the diary basically for a year uh, but it all came together. We had a fantastic time and uh, let's hope we can do more events like that in the future. One of the highlights was clearly the ENAM conference that I helped to organise that we were able to ha hold in the, the Grand Committee Room at the House of Commons with people coming from all across Europe um, to join us for that conference looking at the, you know, how we develop alumni associations across Europe moving forward. One of the great events that I remember over the last few years is the youth event, the mentoring event that we had at Winchfield House. Um, it was incredible listening to the young
young people, their experiences, their aspirations. It's truly, truly motivational. And um, we, need to have, we need to have that kind of representation and voice within our society. We, we, we put together a constitution, we had elections, we've had two successful AGMs, we've got a newsletter, we've had several events, high profile events. We have rapidly developed jazz from just an idea into a proper organisation. I really feel that um, the members who are eligible to join John Adams Society have been on amazing life changing experiences in the United States, whether focusing on politics or business or civil society. And by joining John Adams Society, they can not only share those memories of the brilliant, prestigious programmes they've been on, but they can also help us plan and deliver events, particularly with a US-UK theme that meets their needs and uh, provides excellent opportunities for networking and learning going forward in 2015-16. to 16. Jazz is a really important platform for people who have been on the US Exchange Programme. It brings um, all the IVLPs together. It's a really brilliant platform because we've got some such amazing talented individuals who've been on this exchange program and also the young alumni also it would be brilliant to engage them and get them more involved. Hopefully this is our future plan for next year once the new board forms because we've got some exciting stuff planned. It is so vital that members are engaged at every level in our association that we find we find individuals that are willing to put them forward for leadership positions, that we find uh, ways for people to realise their ideas through the association and fundamentally it's an alumni association so our members mean everything to us. There was a very clear need for the State Department and uh, the Embassy here to reconnect with its alumni and it was very very keen to make sure that it had an alumni association that really brought those people together. I mean after all the American government spends a lot of money on these programs and it seemed pointless to all of us who were involved at the start of this that all of that money is spent and invested in members of the John Adams Society and many many more and then of course those people um, are, are ignored afterwards. In 2015 we want to focus as a committee on doing more for our younger members. Um, when the US government describes these programs they say that they're for current and emerging leaders and we know that we have a lot of emerging leaders in the society so if you have any ideas on uh, what we can do for you, please just let us know. One of my um, exciting things that I would like to ensure we do next year is a mentoring event. We had a really successful one last year at Winchwood House. Um, Elizabeth Dibble hosted for us kindly and all the youth alumni had gathered and all the IVLPs contributed as a mentors, which was really brilliant and much appreciated by the youth alumni. It would be really fabulous to do something like this again. And that's that'll be one of our priorities, especially all the IVLP members requested that they would love to give something back to the young. And that's something I would like to endorse and promote for next year. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to helping the organisation uh, perhaps seek external sponsors to uh, do more events with a European dimension uh, and to have a higher profile generally amongst the alumni community. For me, it's to work effectively as part of the uh, John Adams Society Board in 2015-2016 and uh, really put on high quality events that meet our members' needs and as I mentioned earlier, to really make sure we're getting out of London. We want to look at setting up some sub groups uh, within the society for people who've got specific interests in specific areas. I'm also really keen that we should see uh, more involvement from the, the, the youngest uh, exchange participants, you know, the uh, sick formers and, and students who've been on exchange programmes to make sure we're getting, their, getting them involved too. My vision for the John Adams Society uh, as its chairman over the course of the next two years is to build a robust membership-based organisation in conjunction with the US Embassy and also tapping into my experience and my contacts uh, in Washington uh, in the State Department. I've had conversations with people in Washington and they're very keen to see the John Adams Society grow and progress and develop. Uh, they're very keen to hear more stories about our success and about the work that we're undertaking and I think that there is an amazing opportunity moving forward uh, to ensure that the members that we have 
uh, are engaged, the members that we don't yet have want to join, uh, and that we're running the kind of events that our members really want to get involved with. Uh, we're already starting this by creating a number of subgroups, focusing at first on climate change and the environment, which is a, a very important uh, issue for all of us, and we're going to expand that into the future. We're very mindful of the fact that a number of the events we've arranged in the past have been very focused on potentially a small group of jazz members, and we now want to expand that and make sure that we're capturing uh, the interests of all of our members. So climate change and environment seem to be a very good place to start, but of course there are so many other issues that our members are interested in and we want to hear from them so that we can ensure that we're developing and delivering the right kind of events at the right time uh, and that our members are getting more and more involved over the course of the next couple of years. important at a time like this at the annual general meeting of jazz just to pay tribute and offer our sincere thanks to so many people who have been involved in the origins and the development of this organization. Uh, in particular I'd like to thank the two people who were there at the start, Medessa Ahmed, our founding chairman, and also Kate Bentley who was the, the, the real force at, at the US Embassy uh, when we started jazz and really did help us to make it fly uh, in those early years. Since then there have been many many people involved in jazz uh, and involved in organizing events uh, and frankly staying up until three sometimes four o'clock in the morning to make sure that everything was organized uh, the day before uh, a big event. So on behalf of the entire committee, on behalf of the membership and on behalf of everybody who's been involved I'd like to thank you our members, to thank you our potential and eligible members for joining up hopefully this evening uh, and also a big thank you from me to everybody who has already served on the board and those who are coming onto the board now because this is going to be a great couple of years uh, and I thank you in advance for all of the hard work that's to come. Thank you.